my name is Melissa Terrace. I am a professor at the University of Edinburgh, but prior to that I was a professor at the University of London where I was leading the UCL Centre for Digital Humanities. The Bentham project was set up in the 1950s to understand the work of Jeremy Bentham and over a 40 year period they had managed to go through 10,000 of these manuscripts and, and publish some of them and the question was could we use technology to speed that up? Could we digitise the material? And the prime meeting, the first meeting that we had was about digitisation, could we digitise the whole lot? But we're in a state now where you don't get money for digitisation um, and at the time crowdsourcing was just becoming this technique which was being used online. And this is nearly 10 years ago now, right? So crowdsourcing now is very familiar but at the time Crowdsourcing was not being really used at any scale in the library and archive community. So we put together a funding proposal which was to digitise the manuscripts but also to build this interface as volunteers to help transcribe them and the research element of that was to see whether or not we could use volunteer labour to do something which had been traditionally expected to be a scholarly task. Um, and whether there was a mechanism that we could build that would speed up the transcription of these manuscripts and make them available for others, scholars, but also general public, much faster. It's important to talk about the ethics of doing this. So we treat the volunteers as volunteers because we're not paying them and we're aware of that. But they are part of the team because we couldn't do it without them. And you have to be very careful with volunteer labour within the cultural heritage industries. There are huge discussions, quite rightly so, about that right now. And about making volunteers or asking volunteers to do things that could be paid jobs uh, because of the nature of careers in the cultural heritage sector, because of the low pay in the cultural heritage sectors. You know, these are real ethical issues that we have to navigate. So that's one thing about asking volunteers to do things that people could have been paid for. We didn't have the money to pay people to do the transcription. That's part of the problem. But then you have this issue of free labour, that they do free labour for you. And so you have to treat that with respect. What are they getting out of it, firstly? So we did a large scale survey of this and we have published on this about why folks are getting involved. And there was a whole range of responses and it's this issue about in digital engagement for social good that they were getting something from this too some of them were retired some of them were long-term sick so couldn't really leave the house um, and this was their way of contributing to society or something that was in intellectually engaging some of them had jobs that were boring to them and they used to do this in their lunch hour and they, they looked forward to it and so there was a, someone said that they used to sit and watch EastEnders every night and it was like so destroying and now they, they transcribe Bentham for half an hour every night and actually they felt like they were, it was relaxing and they were contributing. Um, so there's something there about what they're getting from it but still we are basing our work or the wider work on this volunteer labour. So we've been very careful to respect that all the way through the project. We have engagement with the 30 or so key transcribers, often engagement with them. We occasionally sent them things through the post, like a transcribe in the mug or a tea towel. Um, we invited them to the yearly events about Transcribe Bentham and if they could make it they were very welcome to come along and there was a few volunteers came to all the public events that they could. There's also the element of publication. So these transcripts, some of them are then published in the collected works of Jeremy Bentham. We ask the transcribers do they want to be named in the publication? And if they want to be named do they want their username or do they want their real name? Um, and so we give them that choice and I, I think that is a, it's a crucial dialogue, all of that. I, I hope that they know that we are appreciative. We have the newsletter that goes out, I don't know, once every three or four weeks. We have the Facebook groups, we have the Twitter feed um, and then we have the individual emails to people. Um, and it's about dialogue even though they are not on campus, they're not on site, but they're part of the team. And I, I hope they know that. And it's a, 
there's also there's ethical issues about how well the moderators got to know some people and some of the people that are contributing were going through quite a hard time in their lives terminal illness or you know very personal things happening to them that they were looking for something that they could contribute from home and that brings ethical issues with how how you're liaising with people and you have to treat that with respect so I think that the moderators got to know some people very well and you have to treat that that becomes a it becomes almost a friendship but at the same time there's a relationship then and then we have to look after the staff who are sometimes sometimes you know doing a lot of emotional labor we didn't expect I guess that's what I'm trying to say we didn't expect the emotional labor and it was fine but we didn't expect that to be part of our transcription program and that's okay we just have to um, navigate this and ensure that everyone feels supported and respected